Let's check out the Milo interview a little bit. We have some time before Biden comes on. So if we fill this, let, let's even if we get to 50 website members, I will open up phone lines if we have time before Biden. Just sign up at joinpacman.com. There's a, there's two coupon codes that I would be careful about, but they work felony 21 and Mike pillow 50. You can pick whichever one you want felony 21 or Mike pillow 50. And of course, you can sign up via Twitch, but let, let's get right into it. This was my interview with Milo Yiannopoulos. As I told on, on the show last week, I exchanged some emails with Milo. Milo has come out as heterosexual now, and um, I invited him on the show to talk about it, and he said no. So all we can do is go back to my old interview. I'm joined today by Milo Yiannopoulos, who is an associate editor at Breitbart. The reason that Milo is here is to follow up on what, I guess yesterday marked the start of our coverage of Gamergate. And to quickly get people up to speed uh, as to where we are now, at least from the purposes of our show, Gamergate is this online movement, for lack of a better term. There are those who believe that Gamergate is a, a kind of a consumer movement against what some see as fraud, nepotism, cronyism. By the way, wh Gamergate, oh, the stupidest, stupidest. Th okay, anyway. Within the video game industry, there are others who see Gamergate as a misogynistic and sometimes even racist or xenophobic movement designed to keep whether it's women or minorities or other groups out of the video game world. Yesterday, I interviewed uh, Brianna Wu, who is a video game developer. Uh, she made a very specific allegation about an interview with Milo that did not happen, and Milo is here to address that. So, Milo, let's start at the beginning. How did you first get involved with Gamergate? <laughs> Well, I wasn't previously a gamer. In fact, I'd said some relatively disobliging things about gamers in the past. But I kind of got sucked into this issue because I saw, uh, if you like, a, a marginalized community, the gaming community, being accused of some things that had obviously... Extremely marginalized community. You know, uh, when they came for the Jews and I said nothing, then they went for the Romani. When they went for the Romani and I said nothing, then they came for the African-Americans. And then eventually they went for the gamers. He had not done uh, and having its art form, having its its hobby trashed by people who were obviously in it for ulterior motives. And it sort of it I guess it raised my journalistic hackles, if you like, uh, as I sort of saw this, uh, this uh, injustice, if you want to put it like that, going on and thought, I'll, t I'll take a look into this. And as time has gone by, I've become, I guess, the sort of default reporter for all of this. Okay. And is your position that you are a, a, a pro or anti on this issue, or do you see yourself? I know that you wrote in the blog post about your interview with Brianna Wu, which didn't happen. You wrote, I am a reporter and not a member of the movement. <laughs> uh, and thus, Imagine having cared about this, you know, and it's like, ugh. I am well placed to bridge the divide between the pro and the anti side. Do you still stand by that that's your position within Gamergate? Absolutely, and I think it's perfectly fair. And you can see that not only from the interactions that I have on both sides of people, but also um, people have been doing these incredible uh, maps of um, you know, the Gamergate universe. They do this great number crunching and data analysis of the tweets, and you'll see that there are a few people who are able to speak to both sides of this debate slap bang in the middle of this, this great uh, sort of connections map. Um, people like Christina Hoff Sommers from the American Enterprise Oof. Institute and Henry um, are right in the middle, uh, geographically speaking, of both groups. It's all so like it's really mostly about Gamergate, which is so bad for us. Let's skip to the end, because I think I just in a desperate move to try to make it remotely interesting. I asked him about trans issues. I, I I think that happened. Let's see. Places that she uses. Yes, absolutely. I'm saying that. I'm okay. Using, because using, it didn't using read to me. In my opinion, is it didn't read like a satire piece. Last thing I want to say about this: you mentioned uh, transsexualism being a mental disorder. The fact that there is something called gender identity disorder, which is uh, 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 diagnosed, so to speak, in some individuals who feel that their uh, uh, physical gender does not match the gender they feel they are. That's different than saying this is equivalent to psychopathy, for example. By the way, give me a break, guys, on the terminology I'm using. This was seven years ago. Obviously, now I have much more sophisticated language for discussion, discussing trans issues. I think that you're treading on dangerous ground. We may just disagree on this, right? Yeah, no, the sorts of diseases that it's closer to um, are things like, uh, there, I mean, there are patients um, at uh, Johns Hopkins, which is the, the university hospital, the pioneer transition surgery. Um, they have a... They have a um, uh, a, a 
ward which deals with a lot of these sort of related conditions, there are patients who believe that their arms don't belong to them. They wake up one day and they think their arm is no longer part of their own body. There are patients who believe that they are dead, that so they wake up and they're clinically dead. Um, the basis of my argument is that what we don't do is warp reality to conform to those delusions. With those kinds of disorders, we give people therapy and drugs to help them reconcile reality with their, with their minds. Um, that's a very uh, commonly accepted treatment path for those sorts of disorder. My contention is that transgenderism falls into that category of disorder. Okay, and to be clear, this is just an assertion that you're making. Well, it's based on it's based on reading the science. It's based on reading the science from uh, from Johns Hopkins, which is the first university to to really pioneer transition surgery, which no longer performs that surgery because it has a, su a sufficient body of patients to know that that oh, most man. of these people very tragically kill themselves with or without the surgery. And there's some some reason to su to suppose that people who have the surgery are even more likely to kill themselves. It's a treatment plan that doesn't work, um, and it's something that's become a holy cow because. I think because transgender people have uh, been bracketed in with gays and lesbians as part of the sort of LGBT civil rights block. You know, what's interesting about this is there is a lot of anti trans in the gay community. Now, I know Milo, I guess, isn't gay anymore, but he was at the time. I did, you know, OK, um, so we have we now wrongly consider um, transgenderism to be just the next civil rights frontier. I don't believe it has anything uh, in common with gays and lesbians whatsoever. I understand that some people will find that offensive. Well, in I'm, the same way that many people would find that. it, there, there's many people who disagree that the issue of uh, gay and lesbian rights has anything at all to do with the struggle for uh, African American rights in this country, and, and there are I people have, who disagree. Have, so people are on a spectrum on this, no question I have about it. Sympathy with that view too. Um, I don't think those people are entirely wrong. I think it's a debate that we ought to have, but that for various reasons we're not really allowed to. All right. Um, so I, listen, I, Milo. I, with, we're totally out of time. Yeah. So anyway, that was that. Now, if you want to see now, uh, he's been doing. He's he's no longer gay, I guess, and um, he's been doing these interviews with True News. Man, I don't even know if I want to get into this, but it's it's pretty freaking nuts. Here, here's one that he does with this guy, and we waited. Yeah. We waited for the hit piece. Yes. And we waited. Let me guess. Can I take a guess? Yes. Never appeared. It never appeared. Never appeared. Um, and I, I asked him several times. Yep. I emailed Please, him. Where's your hit piece? Yeah, where's uh, the hit piece? <laughs> <laughs> and he told me the editors wouldn't print it. This is now, I guess, ex-gay Milo. I don't know. And what do you think happened, Milo? I know exactly what happened because I've been through this myself mm -hmm. so many times. Um, when somebody spends time around you, around your family, around your team. Around now he's being introduced as a Christian. Do you see that best-selling author and Christian? And your company. As if that's a credential. Um, as I'm sure, well, as I know has been the case with me too. It's not so difficult really to charm people who are essentially fairly simple and charmless journalists. And they find themselves sort of taken with you. Um, what, by the way, yeah, what awards? You know, I jokingly, <laughs> I jokingly say, hey, you know, you should really get a membership because you get access to the award winning bonus show. And I admit they're all awards I give out. Like uh, the value of an award I give my own show is is minimal. What awards has Milo gotten? It's 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 wild. When I've had journalists embedded with me for two or three days, by the end of it, they've been making passes at me mm -hmm. um, and they just when can't you get resist back them. To your publication and say, well, actually, I kind of want to write a bit more of a nuanced piece. He's not quite this. He's not quite that. The editor. We'll turn around and say, <laughs> never mind. Um, I hired somebody uh, once upon a time. All right. Anyway, so let me see if I can find the clip where he does his. Uh, let's see. Milo True News. He's doing this whole thing. OK, yeah, this is no, that's not the one I wanted to show. There's one where like his appearance is just bizarre. I guess it is on this show. Let's let's check it out. Um, yours was Christianity Month? Yes. It's not quite catchy enough, is it? Of course it is. I like Jihad June. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what is this about? And then I guess he was interviewed by someone named Baked Alaska. By the FBI, because you did, let's be honest, tiptoe. Oh, no, no. Baked Alaska is interviewed by Milo. I don't even know. Who, who, what is, what is this? On a sightseeing mission. You went for a little museum. You went for Also, is Milo's audio doubled? I feel like I'm hearing his audio doubled. Like there's a big tech issue. Museum trip on January the 6th. Yes, you did. But 
the thing that, that made me really want to talk to you today was you told me um, uh, by text the other day that uh, in writing, the FBI is coming for you over a tweet. Can you just can you just talk us through? I just wasn't this guy in the Capitol riots. I don't even I don't even want to put this on. I, I just I just can't even put this. On. It's just too it's too much. It's too disgusting. I just can't I can't do it. Sorry, guys. We're not going to do it.